162 Yada Yahawa, Azab, Separation, 4. Naf, Unfaithful, Cheating on the Relationship. Before we commence with the conclusion of the second chapter of Hausha, he delivers, to maintain the proper perspective, it will be helpful to reassess where we have been. God's portrait of Israel began. Say to your brothers, Amal Ahatam, my people, Ameni, and to your sisters, Wala Akothatam, she could have loved and been kind, Rachem. Hausha 2 to 1, rebuke, quarreling and contending with, Rib Bar, your mother, Amatam. Prosecute, filing a complaint, Rib, for she is not my woman or wife, Ky Hai Lo Isha, neither am I her man or husband, Wa Lo Ishai. Let her, therefore, turn away from, Wa Sur, her illicit and illegitimate relationships, her idolatry and whoring, Zenyanim Hai, such that they are away from, men, her presence, Panahai, with her unfaithfulness, Nafulfim Hai, from the way she perceives her breasts, Min Bay and Shad Hai. Hausha 2 to 2. Otherwise, Pen, I will strip her naked, exposing her, Fashat Hai Aum. I will present her, Wa Yatsag Hai, as the day she was born, Ka Yaum Yulot Hai, causing her to be akin to a lifeless and barren place of questionable words, Wa Sim Hai Kaha Midbar. I will make her, Wa Shaith Hai, similar to parched earth, Ka Erezia, such that she dies of thirst, Wa Moth Hai Baha Sama. Hausha 2 to 3. 163 and so with regard to, Wa Eth, her children, Beni Hai, I will be neither loving nor compassionate, neither merciful nor kind, Lo Rachem, because, Ky, they are the children, Beni, of their religious infidelity, their feigned love, and of seeking to profit by being disingenuous, Zanyu Mimhem. Hausha 2 to 4. It should be obvious that, Ky, their mother, Amhem, is unfaithful and acts like a religious prostitute, Zana. She who conceived them, Parahem, should be ashamed and humiliated for having acted inappropriately, Bosh. This is because she conveyed her intent, saying to herself, Ky Amar, I have chosen to continually go after, Holakachar, what I desire from my closest and most intimate relationships, Ahab any, which provide, Nathan, my bread, Lechem any, my water, Wamaim any, my wool, Watsema any, my linen, Wafesheth any, my olive oil, Washiman any, and my drink, Washikwi any. Hausha 2 to 5. Likewise, in response, Laken, behold, he nay, I will guard to restrain and block, hedging up, any souk, that which is associated with your path, eth derek otter, with thorns, Baha Sarah. I will erect a stone wall to block her progress, wa gada eth gada high, so that her way of life, wa nathi bar high, will be incapable of discovering it, lo matza. Hausha 2 to 6. So, she will pursue and annoy, wa radaf, her most intimate lovers and passionate desires, eth ahab high, but she will not achieve what she is chasing after, wa lo nezag eth hem. She shall seek them and will conspire with them, wa bakosh hem, but she will not prevail or find what she craves, wa lo matza. 164 Then she will say, wa ma, I will go and reverse course, returning to, holok wa shu well, my initial husband and former man, ish ha rishon, because it was better, more productive, and beneficial, ky tob, for me then than now, la eni is min otter. Hausha 2 to 7. But she did not acknowledge or even care, wa hai lo yada, that I gave to her, providing for her, ky enoki nathan la hai, the grain, ha doggin, new wine, wa ha thyraush, and olive oil, wa ha yitcher, in addition to having greatly increased her silver, wa kazifrabar la hai, and gold, wa zahab, which they assigned to, asar, baal, the lord, la ha baal. Hausha 2 to 8, therefore, when, la ken, I return, chu, I will grasp hold of, wa lakak, my grain which will be increasing and growing for having observed his banner at its proper time, dog in any bar eth hu, along with my new wine as an inheritance, wa thyraush any, as part of his continuing witness to the appointed meetings, bar mot hu. Then I will rescue and defend, indeed, save by delivering, wa natsal, my wool, sema any, and my linen, wa pishit any, to cover and conceal, la kasa, her nakedness, eth er wa hai. Hausha 2 to 9. However, at this time, right now, wa otter, I am revealing, kala, that which is associated with her stupidity and her foolish lewdness and shame, eth nabluth hai, in the sight of her most intimate lovers and passionate desires, la in ahab hai. And no individual shall save her, wa ish lo natsal hai, out of my hand, min yod eni. Hausha 2.10. Then I will observe the Shabbat by causing a cessation of all, wa Shabbat Sherl, of her merry celebrations, Masos Hai, her festival feasts, Chag Hai, her new 165 moon observances, Hadesh Hai, her approach to the Shabbat, wa Shabbat Hai, 
and all of her designated celebrations, Washel Mode High. Hausha 211. I will abandon, Washamam, her vines, Jeevan High, and her fig trees, Watena High, whereof she has said, Asheramah, these gratuities are for me, Ethahemla Eni, because my sexual partners and lovers, Asher Ahab Eni, have given them to me, Nathan La Eni. However, Wa, I will cause them to be, Simhem, a thicket of tangled undergrowth, La Ya, and the animals, Wa Chea, of the land, Hasade, shall devour them, a Kalhem. Hausha 212. I will take an inventory and record, Wa Pekad, against her, Al Hai, for the time in association with, Eth Yaum, Harbalim, the lords who seek to be perceived as masters, to possess and to control, Harbalim, because, Asha, she blew smoke, burned incense, and made offerings to them, Katal Ahem. Then she was adorned, playing religious dress up, Wa Adda, with her ornamental rings and circular objects, Nizam Hai. Bejeweled, Wa Kelia, she went after, Hai Wa Holakachar, her lovers, pursuing her desires and illicit relationships, Ahab Hai. And she ignored and then forgot me, Wa Eth Eni Shakik, prophetically announces, Naum, Yahawa, Yahawa. Hausha 213. Therefore, by contrast, long thereafter, La Ken, behold, he nay, knowing that she has been deceived, I will leave the way wide open to persuade her should she become open-minded, Anoki Patha High. At that moment, I will walk with her, Waholak High, to ponder the word, even in the place where these statements are questioned, Hamidbar, such that I speak words, Wadabar, to her heart, making an impression 166 upon her judgment and thinking, al Hai. Hausha 214. Beginning then and there, Min Sham, I am prepared to give her, so that she can approach, Wa Nathan La Hai, her vineyards and vine dresser, her garden and resulting fruit, Eth Karem Hai. The valley of Akawa, troubles, Wa Eth E Mekakawa, will become the open doorway, La Petak, of hope, of confidently expecting a good and beneficial future, a means to be optimistic and move forward, Tikwa. Then and there, along with the name, Wa Sham, she will respond with the answer, Anna, as in the days of her youth, Ka Yam Nor Am Hai, and as in the day, Wa Ka Yam, when lifted up, she ascended, Allah Hai, out of the land, Min Eres of Miraim, the crucibles of political and religious oppression, Miraim. Hausha 215. During, Wa Ba, this specific day, Ba Ha Yam Ha Hu, it shall be, Haya, prophetically declares Naum, Yahawa, Yahowah, you will invite, welcome, and meet with me as an individual, Kara Ish Eni. And then you will never again call me, Walo Kara La Eni, Bali, my lord, Bail Eni, ever again, Ode. Hausha 216. For I will renounce, reject, and remove, Wasur, accordingly, Eth, the names and reputations, Shem, of Harbalim, the lords, Harbalim, from, Min, her mouth, Pei Hai, and, Wa, they shall not be remembered, recalled, or mentioned, Lo Zakar, Vi, Ba, their name, Ba Shemhem, ever again, Ode. Hausha, he saves, Hosea 2.17. God does not mince words. He tells it like he sees it. And clearly, at least from heaven's perspective, it is not a 167 pretty sight. Jews have been their own worst enemy and have made a mess of things for the past 1,093,193 days, give or take a new moon or two. Fortunately, for a remnant of Yisrael and devoted Gawam, Yahweh will forgive and forget, reconciling his relationship with a precious few. The renewal of the covenant is on the horizon, less than 4,000 days away. Therefore, addressing the millennial celebration of shelters in the afterglow of the Day of Reconciliations in year 6,000 year, God tells us. Then, Wa, I will cut, carrot, I will establish through separation at that moment, Cal perfect, for them, Lahem, so that they can approach, a family-oriented covenant, Barith, a familial relationship, in that day, Baha Yam Ha Hu, at that time, in conjunction with other living things, in Chea, to approach other life forms, of the garden environs, Hasade, of the sparsely populated areas cultivated for growth, and in harmony with the winged creatures, Wa Im Of, with birds in flight, of the spiritual realm. Ha Shamaim, of the heavens, even the creatures that move about, Wa Remus, of the earth, Ha Dharma, material realm. And so, Wa, I will abolish then destroy, Shabba, I will pulverize such that they cease to exist, Cal Imperfect, the bow, including weapons which make life difficult, Chith, weapons launching projectiles designed to kill, from Kasha, that which is fierce, harsh and severe, injurious and burdensome, and the sword, including that which severs and separates, lacerates and devastates, Wa Cherub, along with war, hostility, and infighting, Wa Milchima, from the earth, Minha Eres, so that I can make it possible for them to relax, 
Wa shakeb hem, confidently and securely, la bitach, safely with complete trust and reliance. Hausha, he delivers, Hosea 2.18. 168 Shortly after being called as a witness on Taruwa, trumpets in 2001, year 5968 year, I came to realize and share a number of profoundly important and seldom considered insights into the big picture Yahweh was painting with his words. One of the first was that from the perspective of the architect and creator present at the time he initiated the Big Bang, the six days of our genesis are equivalent to 14 billion years when viewed in reverse by humans from the Earth. This fact is proven by the residual cosmic microwave background radiation from the Big Bang. It demonstrates that time flowed 1012 times slower from God's perspective, making six 24-hour days and 14 billion years equivalent. Not only are we still living within the sixth day, the seventh, a Shabbat, represents the time alluded to here in Hausha. Commencing on the Shabbat of October 7, 2033, there will be a 1,000-year celebration of Sukkah, camping out on Erez, Earth. During that time, we will live in harmony with our Creator and His creation. Second, God's plan for His people plays to this same cadence. For example, in the period before quark confinement and the transition from energy to matter following the Big Bang, there was no way to measure time. Similarly, the duration of Adam's and Shaw's stay in Gan Eden cannot be quantified from their perspective. Yahweh's timeline commences with our epic 6,000-year sojourn out of Eden, and back to the garden upon our expulsion for not listening. This occurred in year zero year. Third, the story of man's antagonistic relationship with God spans 6,000 years, with the three most important events transpiring every 40 Yabel, or 2,000 years. In year 2000 year, 1968 BCE, Yahweh confirmed the covenant with Abraham, providing the means to return to the garden and camp out with God. Forty Yahweh thereafter, in year 4000 year, on Pesach, Matzah, Bikurim, and Shabo in 33 CE, the Messiah and 169 firstborn, Daud, began fulfilling the Mod Mikre, thereby enabling the benefits of the Barith through Pesach, Matzah, Bikurim, and Shaboah. Fourth, we can correlate the first two dates, years 0 and 2000 year, with the Roman Catholic adaptation of the Imperial Roman calendar in use today, using the genealogies presented within the Torah. They are marked on our Torah timeline as years 3968 and 1968 BC pursuant to Adam and Abraham. We are then led to the date Passover was fulfilled by Gabriel, God's most capable and courageous man, Daud. Using the starting date he delineated to Daniel, which correlates to 444 BC, and the formula he provided, we know that the Messiah, as the Zarawa entered Yahushalem on March 30, 33 CE, Julian calendar, to serve as the Passover lamb, initiating the fulfillment of the first four Mikre. This was four days prior to Pesach in accordance with the Torah's instructions regarding the lamb. Therefore, on Passover, April 3, 33 C on the Julian calendar, the Gregorian calendar was imposed in 1582 C to keep Easter from migrating away from Passover, Daud's Basar, corporeal body fulfilled the promise to make the children of the covenant immortal, opening the door for us to re-enter Eden and Shamaim. The explanation of what occurred as he was tortured by the Romans is painstakingly detailed in his 22nd Mizmor. It, along with his 88th Psalm and the 53rd chapter of Yashair, reveals that as the sun set beginning the Shabbat of Matzah on the 15th of Abib, Daud's Nipesh, incorporeal soul was laden with the guilt of his people. He would carry it with him into Shaul on April 4, 33 C. Now without any evidence to convict us, we became perfect in God's sight, which made it possible for Yahweh to adopt us into his Barith family. He did so as the sun rose the following morning, April 5, 33 C. announcing Baikurim, firstborn children. 170 with these dates having been provided by Daud in the guise of Gabriel, God's most capable and courageous man in the 6th century BCE, all that is required of us is to add 40 Yaobel, or 2000 years, to transition from year 4000 year in 33 C to year 6000 year in 2033. With Taru were fulfilled both in this writing and with a gleaning of the covenant on the first of the seventh month between 2027 and 2029, the next Mikre to be so honored are the most important, the two Yahawa has addressed through Hausha, Kippurim and Sukkah in year 6000 year. So, we now know that Father and Son will return on Yom Kippurim, the day of reconciliations at sunset, 6.22 pm in Yahub Shalem, October 2, 2033. Fifth, God's historical portrait of his relationship with humankind concludes where it began, in Gan Eden. We are returning to the garden of great joy. We will converse with the animals, fly with the birds, and live in peace. This is all part of the final adaptation of the covenant, a time in which the participants will have all chosen to be part of Yah's eternal family. With this known, Yahweh confirms that he is to become engaged to Yisrael. 
and his betrothal is replete with vows. And I will betroth you unto me, wa arasotala eni, forever, la olam, for eternity. I will become engaged for you to approach me, wa arasotala eni, in an honest, correct, rightful, and upright manner, va tzedek, in a way that is truthful, valid, vindicating, and right, both fair and just, through the exercise of good judgment, by making the most informed and rational decision regarding the means to resolve disputes, bar mishpat, by being judgmental, from my, to consider the implications of shafot, deciding and judging, and with unfailing kindness, genuine mercy, unrelenting favor, and loyal, love, wa ba kesed, with enduring fondness for 171 the relationship, in addition to compassion, wa ba rechemim, heartfelt affection, Hausha 219. Then, I will betroth you unto me, engaging with you so that you can approach me, wa aras otala eni, I will show my desire for you to draw near, in a steadfast and trustworthy manner, ba emuna, reliably in truth, dependably in a way that is supportive, confirming, upholding and verifiable, from a man, to be supported and upheld by the truth, established and verified through that which is certain. And you shall yada yahawa, know and acknowledge yahawa, wa yada yahawa, then you will become familiar with, respect, and understand Yahowah as instructed in his Torah, teaching regarding his higher, existence. Hausha, he liberates, Hosea 2.20. Within the Barith, covenant, Yahowah is our heavenly father and the Ruwak Kodesh is our spiritual mother. Symbolically, however, Israel is also presented as God's beloved, his bride. The nation that was divorced for religious infidelity will be reconciled on Kippurim and Aras, betrothed under the Hoopah of Sukkah. After a long intermission, Yahweh's family will be united again. Recognizing that this exchange of vows is occurring on sukkah, shelters, it's hard to miss the wedding hoopah, canopy covering shimmering at sunrise and fluttering in the dawn's breeze. A sukkah is a covering in the form of a shelter, tent, or booth, and thus a canopy. I rather expect Dowd to serve as the best man. Sarah would make a lovely maid of honor. Yahweh has written his vows for his bride. His devotion is forever. He has promised to engage such that Israel is drawn to him. His approach will be honorable, and the result will be vindicating. And during this engagement, both God and his bride will be upright and 172 truthful. And while that's nothing new for Yah, it's a different approach for Israel. As always, Yahweh wants his beloved to use their best judgment, to make an informed and rational decision regarding their relationship. But this is a marriage of mind and heart, sound thinking and unfailing love. Compassionate, Yahweh promises to be kind, indeed, generous, affectionate, and merciful toward his returning bride. She has been through hell and is now ready for heaven. It is among the most alluring messages in the prophets. The long intermission is over. God is engaging with his people again, acknowledging that they can approach him in a steadfast and trustworthy manner and remain together forevermore. Of these receptive souls, Yahweh says, and you will know Yahweh. Having invested the past 22 years translating God's words to compose Yada Yahweh, it is reassuring to see the title chosen for these books long ago scribed within this prophecy foretelling the reconciliation of Israel and Yahweh. This has been our mission. And if you will indulge this witness for a moment, the war between this introductory thought and its conclusion serves to bring them together, with one leading to the other. From this perspective, Yahweh may also have intended. Then, I will betroth you to me, engaging so that you can approach me in a trustworthy and reliable manner, one verified, confirmed, and upheld by Yada Yahweh. And even if that is one stride too far, for many Israelites, the bride will have been brought back to the wedding hoopah in time for sukkah by this presentation of Yahweh's vows. Because of Taruwa, a joyous remnant of Israel will find Kippurim in time to celebrate sukkah. With our return to the garden, it will be heaven on earth. 173 it will be, Wahaya, at this time, during this specific day, Baha Yam Ha Hu, I will respond, Anna, I will answer with a declarative and informative reply, prophetically declares, Naum, Yahweh, Yahweh, God's name transliterated as guided by his Torah, instructions on his higher, existence. I will provide the answer, Anna, I will reply, offering informative testimony, responding with something to think about, in association with, Eth, the spiritual realm of the heavens, Ha Shamaim, and they, Wahem, will reply, Anna Eth, will respond to answer, on the earth, Eth Ha Eres, in the material realm. Hausha 221. The earth, Waha Eres, will answer, Anna Eth, singing to, that which is associated with, Eth, growing exponentially as symbolized by grain, Ha Dogin, the barley harvest, becoming an heir by the new wine, Wa Eth Ha Thiraush, and the olive oil representing the spirit of enlightenment, Wa Eth Ha Yizaha. And they, Wa Hem, shall provide answers regarding, Anna Eth, respond to, 
Israel, what God has sown, Israel, the seed and offspring of God, from Zara, to sow, conceive, produce, and yield and El, God, commonly transliterated Jezreel. Hausha 2.22. So, Wa, I will sow, planting her seed, Zara Hai, the seeds I have sown with her will germinate and I will have children through her, for myself, La Eni, approaching and drawing near me, within the land and upon the earth, Baha Eres, in the material realm. I will have compassion for, demonstrate mercy toward, even come to love and forgive, Wa Rachem, I will show affection, treat favorably, and absolve, Lo Rushoma, no mercy, Lo Rushoma, no favors and no compassion for having been unlovable, no forgiveness or benefits to the one who was beyond pity. 174 I will say to, Wa Amala, Lo Ameni, not my people, Lo Ameni, not my family, you are my family, Ameni Otter, you are my people. Then he shall say, Wa Huama, you are my God, Elohim Meni. Hausha, he delivers, Hosea 2.23. The timing is neither random nor open-ended. There is only one day distinct from all others, Yom Kippurim, the day of reconciliations in year 6000 year, when the remnant of the children of Israel will respond to God in this way. This is the time each year that the Torah has invited us all to Anna, reply to Yahweh's Mikra, invitation to meet during Kippurim, reconciliations. Those who respond with the answer God is seeking will hear and speak these words. For the first time since we strolled together in the garden, it will be heaven on earth. What is conveyed in the spiritual realm will be heard on earth. We will all rejoice over growing exponentially, inheriting the kingdom, and being anointed by the Spirit. What God has sown will finally take root and produce as He intended. The only memory of Israel will be of the seeds God has sown to make this day possible. This is the beauty of Haushag, because the worst of times leads to the best of days. Those who have long been unlovable will be loved and forgiven. The children who were disinherited will be reunited. The Israelites will come to know God again. It would be impossible to write a more favorable conclusion to the second chapter of Hausha than God has done. 175 Based upon what we have learned by studying God's words, if something is important, Yahweh will repeat himself to ensure we understand. And since observing his Torah, knowing his name, answering his invitations, and participating in his covenant are of foremost importance, God's overt animosity is continually directed toward the religious who misrepresent and misappropriate these essential aspects of our relationship with him. Yahweh's universal disdain for mankind's most prevalent institution, religion, is not only the single most repeated theme throughout his testimony but, also, the least understood. With few exceptions, and for relatively short periods of time, God and his people have been estranged for the past 4,000 years. Yahweh's frustration over this perversion of his intent permeates the Torah and prophets. And this isn't just because mankind's preference for religion makes a mockery of God and what Yahweh has done for us, nothing is more destructive or deadly. The viral nature of religion is so invasive and debilitating, that even in the most uplifting moments, it is part of the conversation. Its existence outside of the garden is why Eden was protected. God's desire to curtail its spread is why Yahweh intervened early on in Babel. Religion's prevalence precipitated the flood. Addressing the empire synonymous with institutionalizing religion, and integrating it into their culture and government, it was not until after Abraham had walked away from Babylon that Yahweh introduced himself to him. Consistent with this realization, the first condition of the covenant, the lone prerequisite for those wanting to be part of Yahweh's family, is to walk away from Babel, being confused and confounded by the commingling of the cultural, religious, and political precepts of Babylon. And yes, this is why Gabriel, Daud 176 revealed to Daniel that the malfeasance of Babylon, would evolve into history's most hideous beasts. Miraim is the crucible of religious and political oppression from which Yahweh liberated his people. Being free of its controlling influence is the message of the first statement Yahweh etched in stone. The second statement is entirely anti-religious, with God encouraging us to avoid every permutation of it because our lives and those of our children depend upon it. Moving from the covenant and tablets to the invitations, Pesach and Matzah were conceived and fulfilled to resolve the life-threatening, and infectious nature of religion and politics. And Kippurim celebrates re-establishing the relationship these foes destroyed. The story of Jezreel is that of religion becoming so intertwined and pervasive in government, the community, and culture that it would have to be removed for the nation to have any hope of surviving. But even with the death of the Lord's priests, the lure of religion would captivate the people, necessitating the divorce, so vividly portrayed throughout Hausha. Continuing to use the infidelity of adultery as the metaphor most apt, to describe the disloyalty of his people, the prophet was inspired to expose and condemn what Israel had become. Yahweh, Wa Yahowah, and our Eloah, God as directed in his Torah, teaching regarding his Ha-Yeh, existence and our Shalom, restoration, said to me, Amar el-Eni, 
go out again, owed Holoc, repetitiously and without ceasing move about, cal imperative, and choose to love, Ahab, show your desire for, being passionate about, cal imperative, a woman, Isha, who is amorous with, devoted to, and passionate about, Ahab, who loves and desires, an evil neighbor, an immoral fellow countryman, a loud-mouthed friend. 177 and an undesirable companion, Ra, a wicked, no good, improper, and immoral, unethical, and irrational association, who is an unfaithful adulteress involved in religious worship, Wanaf, an idolatrous whore. Similar to the way, Ka, to show what it is like for, Yahawa, Yahowah, an accurate presentation of the name of Eloah, God as guided by his Torah, instructions regarding his higher, existence, loves and desires to be with, Ahab, is passionate about, the children of Israel, F. Beni Israel, the offspring of those who struggle and contend with the Almighty, when they turn to the presence of other, different and additional, gods, Wahem Pana El Elohim Acre, when they turn away and look to the appearance of subsequent deities, and who became lovers of compressed raisin cakes, Wa Ahab Ashishur and Ab, and who adore forming cakes by pressing down on grapes. Hausha, he protects, Hosea 3-1. Loving someone who adores us in return, is among life's greatest rewards. However, few things are as frustrating, indeed, depressing and debilitating, as unrequited love. And this is what Israelites have caused Yahweh to endure for most of the past 4,000 years. Let's be clear, God has no interest in sexual relations. Therefore, he does not feel cheated when we are affectionate and amorous with another person. He has no stated preference for monogamy over polygamy. While disgusting, this is not about Abraham offering to share Sarah with kings to increase his status among men. More to the point, since Daud is Yahweh's beloved, his preference for eighteen women, rather than one, has no bearing on God's perception of naf, adultery. God is not addressing sex but, instead, is using adultery to explain his overriding issue with his people. Yes, they were unfaithful, but it was because they had long been enamored with worshipping religious gods. 178 While it has been obvious up to this point that Yahweh is using naf, adultery as a metaphor to describe religious infidelity, there is no mistaking that conclusion in this statement, Yahweh, Yahowah, said to me, Amar el Eni, go out again and repeatedly, Bode Holoch, choose to be passionate about, consistently showing your desire and love, Ahab, for a woman, Isha, who desires and is enthralled over, Ahab, an evil neighbor, an immoral fellow countryman, a loud-mouthed friend, and an undesirable companion, Rhea, who is an unfaithful adulteress involved in religious worship, Wanaf, to reveal what it is like for, Ka, Yahweh, Yahowah, to love and desire to be devoted to, Ahab, the children of Israel, F. Beni Israel, when they turn to the presence of other, different, and additional, gods, Wahem Pana El Elohim Acre. Turning to other gods is the result of religion. Period. With gods, you can have one or many, but with God, there can only be one. This known, if God was insistent that his title be obfuscated by robbing the word of its vowel and replacing it with A, why didn't he have HSHM write LHM? Why replace Yahowah with Adonah, excuse me, DN, when, would have been more consistent. Since Hausha is a prophetic book, when we apply Yahweh's eternal truth to this day so close to his promised return to resolve this problem, it is impossible not to recognize Judaism as the current impediment to reconciliation. Rather than rabbis being the arbitrators of God's intent, they are frustrating it, and him. Up to this point, Hausha has said very little and Yahweh has conveyed a great deal about Israel's religious addiction. But now, we hear from the prophet, himself. 179 So, I bartered and bought her, Kara High, I negotiated, traded, and exchanged money to acquire her, for myself, La Eni, with fifteen silver coins and as much barley as a pair of donkeys could carry, Chamesh Asar Kezifwa Choma Saur Elitic Saura. Hausha 3 to 2. So, I said unto her, Wa Ma El Hai, you can continue to live, Yashab, you can stay, Kal Imperfect, with me for a long time, La Eni Rabim Yamim. Hausha 3 to 2. You will no longer have to be a prostitute and be demeaned, Lozana, and you will not have to be with a man, Lo Haya La Ish. So then, this is how I will be with you, Wagam Eni El Otter. Hausha, he delivers, Hosea 3 3. Religious prostitutes were clearly in high demand and highly valued. Hausha paid dearly to liberate this woman from being a sex slave, someone owned, controlled, and used by the religious. I hope she was more appreciative than the Israelites had been when liberated from Miraim. I wonder how many before me have missed it, even though it is obvious, although I did not notice it until this edit of the original writing twenty years ago. This is not Gomo but a second temple prostitute. Therefore, if we are to see the initial religious accoutrement as his first wife, then this is the second.
Since two wrongs do not make a right, marital adultery was not Israel's problem but, instead, religious infidelity. At a time when having many wives was common and condoned, as was having many gods, even one was one too many because it was not here. So, to draw our attention to this comparison between religious prostitution, and Israel's religious whoring, the Prophet reveals. 180 for by comparison, KY, indeed, the children of Israel, Beni Israel, shall abide, Yashab, for a long time, Rabbi Miamim, without a counselor or king, Ein Melech, without a patron or leader, Wa Ein Sar, without a leader who is empowered, without the ability to prepare a sacrifice, Wa Ein Zebach, without an upright stone pillar or memorial, Wa Ein Matzabar, without even the stump of the original tree, and without the linen vestment to adorn the priest, if out. The white coat worn by lowly ministers to aid their service, or someone to heal them of their familial god and religious idolatry, wa tarifim, someone to restore the ailing family to health. Hausha 3-4. Eventually, during the last days, achar, in the end, finally, the children of Israel, Beni Israel, will return, shub, will change their attitude and they will come back and be restored, kalim perfect. Then, they will seek and find, wa bakosheth, at that moment in time they will be sufficiently responsible to procure the information and learn what is required to recognize, peel perfect, Yahawa, Yahawa, the proper pronunciation of Yahowah, our Eloah, God as directed in his Torah, teaching regarding his Hayah, existence and our Shalom, restoration, their God, Elohimhem, along with Daud, Wa Eth Daud, through love, their king and counselor, Melechem. And they will come to show respect for, even revere, Wa Pochod El, they will appreciate the awesome nature of, Yahawa, Yahawa, written as directed by his Torah, teaching, for his beneficial qualities, his generosity and goodness, wa el tophu, for his attractive nature, fair and moral approach, and joyous disposition, among the remnant in the last days, ba a karath ha yamim. Hausha, he liberates, Hosea 3 5. 181 I find Hausha to be the most mentally stimulating and emotionally draining of the prophets. His message is unrelenting, like a fire hose gushing forth at full blast. From the religious prostitutes to the infamous children, from Jezreel to the promised land, from divorce to reconciliation, from the law and Akada of false gods to Yahweh, it is all here for us to consider. In this statement, Israel is being compared to a high-priced religious whore kicked out of the bordello and bereft of her clients. She would be leaderless and adrift, without so much as a memorial stone for her to remember who she had once been. Her priests and kings were gone. The rabbis would replace the priests while the dictators of other nations would rule over them instead of their kings. There would be no way to reach them or heal them from their religiosity. Such is the fate of those who believe in false gods. But this story does not end that way. God's people, at least a remnant of them, will return in the end. Israel's relationship with Yahweh will be restored. They will change their approach to God and, in so doing, find him. They will learn what is needed to recognize Yahweh as their God at long last. Recognizing that this was written centuries after Daud's passing, the realization that the surviving Israelites will acknowledge Daud as their king upon Yahweh's return is exhilarating. It is yet another affirmation of his third coming, of the re-establishment of his kingdom, and of the return of the Messiah. This leaves Maimonides looking like a nincompoop for not recognizing either and Paul looking like a liar for claiming otherwise. It is Yahweh and Daud, not Hashem nor Jesus, who are returning, and they will have finally garnered their people's respect. As hard as it is to believe now, in the 182 summer of 2023, even just 10 years from this majestic day, a time is fast approaching when Jews will value Yahweh and his firstborn above their rabbis and find them to be of greater benefit than Judaism. And for finally doing so, a remnant of Israel will be spared in the last days. In this regard, it is interesting to note that the afoul outer garment worn by the priests was corrupted according to what we read in Shafot, Judges 8:27. all Israel played the harlot. They were in love with Baal, the Lord. Taraphim then suggests that, without the lowly priests serving the people during Passover, unyeasted bread, firstborn children, seven Shabbats, trumpets, reconciliations, and shelters, there has been no healing the household of Israel. While this tragic story has a happy ending, there is no reason to wait for the last page to be turned. Yahweh is here now, ready and willing to accept his wayward children with open arms. It is well past time for God's children to come back home. The means to know Yahweh and engage in his covenant has always been straightforward. Listen to him, and then respond accordingly. But this has proven too difficult for Israel. Listen to, Sharma, here, the word, Tabar, message, communication, and account, the spoken testimony and written witness, of Yahweh, 
a transliteration of Yahowah is instructed in his Torah, teaching regarding his higher, existence, children of Israel, Beni Israel, offspring of those who struggle and contend with God, for it is certain that, KY, Yahowah, Yahowah, God's name transliterated as guided 183 by his Torah, instructions on his higher, existence, has a dispute and grievance, ribe, has an indictment, quarrel, accusation, and contentious argument, against the inhabitants, im yashab, of the land and earth, ha eres. This is because, ky, there is no honesty or integrity, ein emeth, no truth or validity, no veracity or certainty, no dependability or consistency, no devotion or sense of loyalty, wine kesed, no love, kindness, goodness, or affection, or understanding or thoughtful insights pertaining to, wine doubt, or the knowledge, judgment or discernment needed to comprehend, God, Elohim, in the land and on earth, Baha Eres. Hausha, he saves, Hosea 4 1. As impactful as Yahweh's revelation through Hausha has been up to this point, there may be no more influential revelation within the prophets than what lies before us in the fourth chapter of Hausha. God is giving his people yet another opportunity to avoid the plague of Judaism by listening to him. It is the cure for religion and what ails the human condition. Yahweh's grievance with Israel goes well beyond them neither knowing nor understanding him. He is perturbed because in the midst of their chronic ignorance they claim otherwise. If they had simply ignored him, while tragic, it would not have been nearly as injurious as pretending otherwise. For having written voluminous religious tomes claiming to have been inspired by God, Yahweh is telling us that the rabbis lack integrity. They are dishonest, and devoid of veracity and validity. They aren't even consistent. There are nearly as many strains of Judaism as there are Jews. Over the many years that I have been studying Yahweh's testimony, I have yet to find a single rabbinical 184 insight worth sharing. They may know many things, but when it comes to understanding, they are sorely lacking. One of the many reasons that the overwhelming preponderance of insights derived from these translations is unheralded is that those who focus on the Hebrew text are blinded by their religion. Yahweh's message is so hostile to their beliefs that they are incapable of seeing his words for what they represent. To comprehend God's testimony, we must first come to know him. He and his word are one, inseparable and dependable, consistent and enduring, liberating and enlightening. Rather than weave religion into the testimony, we do ourselves a service to weed it out. Rather than looking for commandments to obey, we should seek instructions that emancipate. Since Yahweh stated that this deplorable condition negatively influencing his people would endure until it is rectified, with some changing their attitude during the last days, Rabbinic Judaism is the problem. They will have sanctioned the curse of Allah, Allah, they will have invoked divine restrictions, bans, and punishments for not having told the truth and for having sworn a lamentable oath resulting in unrelenting burials, Cal Infinitive. They will cringe in fear, bow in submission, and be disowned for cringe-worthy deceptions, Wakakash, for promoting lies while annulling the relationship, by being delusional they will be oppressed, even malnourished and starved as they are estranged, Peel Infinitive. They will be murdered and be murderous, Ratsack, they will kill and be killed, they will be slaughtered, dashed by the sword and cut into pieces, Cal Infinitive. 185 They will steal, surreptitiously purloining what belongs to another, Ganab. They will be deceptively misleading, fraudulent thieves, Cal Infinitive. Then by continuously and demonstrably committing religious infidelity, Wanaf, by being unfaithful and unreliable, especially disloyal, Cal Infinitive, they will break all bounds in diaspora, parrots, they will be broken and scattered by their widespread and pervasive rebellion, Cal Perfect and they will be plagued, Wanaga, they will be stricken, Cal Perfect, by the shedding of copious amounts of blood, Dam Bar Dam, with blood libel, killing, and death. Hausha, he liberates, Hosea 4 2. This is a scathing indictment of the consequence of Rabbinic Judaism. And it is all actionable and demonstrable, with one demeaning verb following another, Allah, Kakash, Ratsak, Ganab, Naf, Parats and Naga. It is hard to imagine anything worse. In Hebrew, which is the basis of Arabic, Allah, Allah is a pejorative. It means to curse and invoke divine harm. Those who Allah bind themselves to a lamentable oath resulting in untold grief and endless burials. Allah is unfit and incapable, harmful and cursed. He is untruthful. Such is the nature of false gods. Do not be fooled, Allah is not the Arabic word for God. God is similar in Arabic to its origin in Hebrew, albeit with an intriguing twist, Ila versus El, indicating that God is feminine in Islam. Allah is one of the four names ascribed in the Quran to the Islamic God. They are in the order of their chronological appearance, Lord, or Rahman, Arahim, and then Allah. And like Allah, curse, the other names are also derived from Hebrew. Lord is from Robar, greatly esteemed. 
Rahman is based upon Rachim, loving and 186 merciful, a womb of compassion. Hausha 223. Rahim is the plural of Ra, which is from Ra and Ra in Hebrew, see Hausha 3 to 1. It means evil companion, immoral associate, unethical neighbor, undesirable friend, loudmouthed fellow, and irrational shepherd. With this in mind, consider the Islamic Basamallah, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, in, Ba, the name, Shem, of the God, Ella, who loves, Rachim, evil associates, rhyme. Ever the condescending one, Satan revealed his true nature in Islam and nary a fool is wiser for it. And speaking of fooling fools, Quran is from the Hebrew Kara, to read and recite, neither of which Muhammad was capable of doing. Hausha 4-2 is prophetic, with Yahweh blaming rabbis for their role in creating the curse of Allah 1500 years in advance of their complicity. For those who have studied the Quran and Hadith, or just read Prophet of Doom, you are aware that Muhammad paid rabbis in Yathrib for Talmud recitals which he then bastardized to create the Quran. The ink was not yet dry on the Babylonian Talmud, and the rabbis were hawking it for cash. As a result, Jews would kakash, cringe in fear and bow in submission while being disowned for the cringe-worthy deceptions incorporated into the curse of Allah. In this prophetic statement, Allah was conveyed as a verb in the Kal infinitive. This means that the curse would be genuine, and self-defining, palpable and ongoing. And in this regard, here is another uncomfortable truth, Islam was conceived in the ancient rock-hewn city of Petra, in the Becca Valley, in what is known as the Wadi Musa, just 101 miles, 162 km, south of Jerusalem, not in Mecca. Petra, which was located between the northern tip of the Gulf of Aqaba and the southern shores of the Dead Sea, was within the Judean sphere of influence. By contrast, Yathrib, today's Medina, where the Quran began to sound like a twisted rendition of the Babylonian Talmud, was 187 inundated with Israelites. Their presence was a legacy of the northern kingdom being hauled into captivity by the Assyrians and not returning until they were booted out by Muslims following the re-establishment of Israel. Kakash is especially revealing in a religious discussion. It means, to deceive by telling lies and acting deceptively. It is to deny the truth. To kakash is to, distort reality, to create a delusion, to promote an errant opinion. To kakash is to bow down in submission. It is to cower in fear rather than out of respect. To kakash is to be beguiled into being part of a worthless relationship, as a direct result of having been conned and betrayed. The kakash are disowned because they have been unfaithful. Further, since Ratzak was written using the peel stem, we know that, by lying, the rabbis would cause Jews to bow in submission and cower in fear. In the infinitive mood, they would persist in their delusions and be defined by them. Ratzak is to kill and be killed, to murder and be murdered. It is to be dashed by the sword and cut into pieces. The Ratzak are struck down and slain. With Ratzak scribed in the Kal infinitive, it serves as a genuine indictment that is self-defining, highly descriptive, actionable, demonstrable, actual, and continual. Ganab is to be a thief, surreptitiously stealing what belongs to another. Those who Ganab, are deceptively misleading and fraudulent. Since this was intended as an actual and ongoing depiction of rabbis, it was also conveyed in the Kal infinitive. Now that Yahweh has affirmed that by using Naf he is addressing religious infidelity and not marital carousing, we know that God is accusing rabbis of being unfaithful, unreliable, and disloyal. These rabbinical characteristics become indelible, continual, and self-defining when cast under the Kal infinitive. 188 parrots is actually much more sinister than simply break or broken. It conveys to violently break down and to destroy. A parrots is a terrorist being hostile, operating in opposition, harming and killing others while destroying property. These terrorists spread out and invade other regions. They speak in a way that encourages destructive and harmful behavior from others. To parrots is to rebel against authority as in to rebel against Yahweh. And while Rabbinic Judaism is guilty of breaking the covenant with Yahweh, in this context, God is saying that their disloyalty and infidelity break all bonds. The betrayal is beyond comprehension. As a result, Yahweh is also predicting the diaspora, revealing that the Jewish propensity to rebel against him will lead to the people being scattered. In this regard, it is interesting to note that Daud was known on a few occasions to turn on his people but never on his God. Things got so bad that he briefly sought shelter among the Philistines. He would side with his rogue son, Absalom, rather than defend Israel. And when given a choice to spare his people or himself late in life, he chose poorly. The lesson is that Yah recognizes that Yahweh are irascible, and tough to love, and that we will all be challenged at times to support the chosen people, himself included. And, therefore, so long as we remain loyal to Yah and do our best with Israel, our God will remain loyal to us. This is also true with Mose. 
His relationship with Yahweh was steadfast and unshakable. His battles were consistently fought against those he was saving. It began in Miraim, when the Hebrews turned on Mose after he rescued a slave from being beaten by a taskmaster. They turned on him again prior to crossing the sea. The great dispute around the waters of Meribah, and the beatdown Mose received upon first surveying the promised land are troubling examples of consistently unlovable, and 189 unredeemable behavior on behalf of Israel. And yet, through it all, Mose remained loyal to Yahweh. To be Naga is to be stricken with a plague. So, from Yahweh's perspective, religion is a Naga dam, plague of death, a pandemic that results in the loss of life and shedding of blood. The problem is, and always has been, religion. Religions are man-made constructs designed to elevate and enrich clerics and kings at the expense of the many whom they seek to fleece and control. Yahweh hates them as much as he despises those who preach and promote such deceptions. And while this is the most pervasive theme throughout the prophets, it is also prevalent within the Torah. For example, in Kara, Leviticus 19, we read. Yahweh, Yahowah, spoke to, sharing words with, Debar El, Mose, Moshe, to convey, Lama, Kara 19-1, share this message, Debar, with the entire community of eternal witnesses to the restoring testimony, El Sherlida, among Beni Israel, the children who engage and endure with God, El Sherl Israel, saying to them, Wama Alhem, you should genuinely and continually be set apart, special and uncommon, Kodesh Haya, for I, Kyne, Yahweh, Yahowah, your God, Elohim Atom, am set apart, special, and uncommon. Kodesh. Kara, called out, Leviticus 19:2. To be set apart is to be removed from the prevalence of mankind's most common toxin, religion. Do not forfeit your life to this disease. The fact that Israel did, establishing countless variations of Judaism, the people forfeited not only their birthright but, also, the opportunity to serve as Yahweh's prophets and witnesses, conveying his eternal and 190 restoring testimony. Among millions of Jews, there would only be 40 of them. And it is because they preferred listening to their religious leaders rather than the God of the relationship. Do not approach, turn to, or appear in the presence of, Alpana El, false gods, objects of worship, or religious imagery, ha -ilil. Do not engage on behalf of, perform in association with, or attempt to fashion for yourself, Loasar, gods, Elohim, which are cast or considered anointed, masker. I am Yahweh, any Yahweh, your God. Kara, called out, Leviticus 19.4. God begged his people not to be religious. And yet, they defied him, becoming the only ethnicity indistinguishable from their faith. When a person says that they are Jewish, it is typically an admission that their religion is Judaism. This condition is so pervasive that most people cannot distinguish between the two. And this is not by accident because the rabbis in charge of immigration into Israel use proof of adherence to ultra-Orthodox Judaism as their litmus test for eligibility. You should not make a habit of stealing, Loganab, nor should you consistently feign obedience, act deceptively, convey that which is not true, nor bear false witness, while lo kakash. Do not lie too, mislead or betray, Walo Shakar, an individual within the community, Ishbar Mithu. Kara 19:11. Do not swear an oath or make a promise, Walo Shaba, in my name, Bar Shemeni, which is deceptive, misleading, or false, Shakar, and in so doing, profane, defile, and dishonor, watch all, the name of your God, Eth Shem Elohim Otter. 191 I am Yahweh, any Yahweh. Kara, called out, Leviticus 19:12. The religious all feign obedience, which means that they are trying to fool themselves and others that they are devout. The realization that they do not practice what they preach is manifest in the realization that rabbis are in it for the money and that they are more abusive toward women and children than Catholic priests. It is all a lie, their onerous and regimented lives, their restrictive and ignorant faith, their duplicitous and argumentative words, and their dual religious apparel. In their words and deeds, religious Jews have dishonored the name of God, going so far as to not only misrepresent him in their Talmud but erase his name from his Torah. And if that was not sufficiently deceptive, they call their Talmud the Torah. In the next chapter of his Torah, Guidance, and within Kara 21-7, Yahweh stays on theme. Then Yahweh spoke to Mose, communicating, Wadaba Yahweh el Moshe Lama, Kara 20-1, to the children of Israel, Wa el Beni Israel, say, Amar, any individual person among the people who engage and endure with God, Ishish min Beni Israel, including anyone of a different ethnicity, Wa min Hajur, who is living as a guest within Israel, Hagrabai Israel, who offers any of his offspring or who sows something, Asher Nathan min Zerahu, to Molech. A false god or king claiming the authority to rule, Laha Molech, 
they will surely die, month month. The people of the land, Amha Eres, should cover him with stones, Ragam Hubaha Eben. Kara 20-2. I will also set my presence, Wa any Nathaneth Pana any, against that individual, Baha Ishahu. I will cut him off and out from the midst of his family, Wa Karath eth human Kireb Amhu, because he has 192 given some of his offspring and what he has sown, Kiwai min Zerahu Nathan, to Molik, a false god or king claiming the authority to rule, Laha Molik. In so doing, Laman, that which is associated with my sanctuary as a special, separated, and set apart place, ethmic dash any, becomes sullied and defiled, tame, in addition to dishonoring, while Archol, my set apart, unique, and special name, eth shem kogish any. Kara 20-3. When the religious claim to speak for God, and yet contradict him, as is the case with Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, they tarnish Yahweh's name and reputation. And since the Torah and prophets were presented through Yahweh, Jews, when they sacrifice their children by encouraging them to demonstrate their allegiance to false gods and wannabe kings, everything God revealed through Israel is sullied. Molech is more than the Lord of the Ammonites. This name is based upon Melech, which denotes a man or woman who claims the authority to rule as a king or queen. As such, this statement defines what the world is doing every day by turning children over to the false rhetoric of disingenuous leaders chasing after false gods. For example, the Haredim's support for the Netanyahu coalition on the condition that they receive grants and exemptions is as Molech as it gets. In this regard, Yahweh is warning us against tolerance and appeasement. It only takes one to ruin the lives of many. Religion is a particularly infectious disease. If, wa im, the people of the earth, Amha Eres, act like hypocrites and ignore or conceal this, shutting their eyes, alam alam hem, regarding a person like this, minha ish ha hu, when he causes his child or something he has sown, bar Nathan hu min hu, to honor Molik, a false god or king claiming the 193 authority to rule, la ha Molik, such that he is not dispatched and continues to live with them, la bilthi mobtheth hu, Kara 20-4, then I will place my presence. Wasim any eth pana any, against that individual, Baha ish ha hu, as well as against, wa ba, his political, religious, or social group, misfaka hu. I will banish them, severing them, wa karath eth hu, from among their family and people, min kirebam hem, along with anyone who follows him into prostitution by feigning love for money, wa eth shirl hazana cha hu soliciting an unfaithful and inappropriate relationship, Lazana, by pursuing, even at some later time, a char, Molik, as a false god or a king claiming the authority to rule, Ha Molik. Kara 20-5. It is better that the one carrying the infectious disease is quarantined than have the entire community get sick and die. When we uproot the first weed in the garden, we do not risk losing the entire crop to the invasive threat. And in this regard, it is the Haredim who are prostituting themselves and sacrificing their children for the Molik of political Israel. Continuing to denounce religion in the Torah and preach intolerance, Yahweh says. Furthermore, Wa, the soul, Ha Nepesh, who turns to and approaches Ashapana El, a medium or psychic with the idea of communicating with the dead, Ha O, or toward the one familiar with spirituality, Wa El Ha Yideni, Tahor, Lazana, after them, Achahem, I will place myself against that soul, wa Nathaneth any Baha Nipesh ha hu, and will cut him off and separate him, wa Karatheth hu, from among his people, min Kirebam hu. Kara 20-6. 194 Avoid outside influences, so that you can be set apart and special, wa Kadash, and then be, wa Haya, separate and uncommon, unlike others, Kadash, for indeed, Ky, I, Ne, Yahawa, Yahowah, am your God, Elohim Atom. Kara, called out, Leviticus 27. Clearly, there is a direct correlation between prostitution and religion according to God. And that was the reason we turned to the Torah, wanting the assurance that we were correct. The institution that would claim that it is a moral bastion against prostitution and whores is leading the parade of harlots. Yahweh wanted the opposite for his people. His intent for Israel was to be separate and distinct from the Gentile nations surrounding them. God was appalled that human civilizations were defined by their religiosity, politics, and militarism, and he wanted better for his people. While even the religious will denounce mediums, psychics, and attempting to communicate with the dead, most venerate their perceived saints, sages, and prophets, reveling in their ancient pronouncements. And since these rituals are clearly religious, by specifically denouncing practices, which even the religious see as tending toward the occult, God is able to convey his concern. 
Incidentally, since Yahweh distinguished his witness with his name, one of the easiest ways to determine if someone is speaking for God, or for himself, is to look for the divine stamp of approval and authenticity. If you do not see Yahweh's name presented throughout the text, it was not inspired by God. This test is sufficient in itself to scrap the Christian New Testament, Talmud, and Quran. Every significant civilization in human history was overtly religious. The rulers always supported the priests and the priests universally endorsed the political leaders. 195 even their militaries marched to the edicts of clerics and kings. And they all imposed caste systems, limiting everyone's freedom, and affording the people no choice in what to believe, where to live or work. And it is these limitations that Yahweh detests. Moreover, why, you should not follow, lo holok, the customs and traditions, bar chukka, of the Gentile nation, Hagawi, which, for the benefit of the relationship, Asher, I will send away before your appearance, any shalak min pana atom. This is because, ky, they have engaged in and done, asa, all of these things, eth shirla lay. And this is why I am disgusted by them, wa kuz bar hem. Kara 2023. Therefore, I have promised you that, wa ma la atom, you will inherit, atom yarash, their soil, eth odamahem. I am giving it to you, wa any Nathan hai la atom, as an inheritance, la yarash. It is a land, eth hai eres, flowing with milk and honey, zu shalab wa debash. I am Yahweh, any Yahweh, your God, Elohim Atom, who, to show the way to the benefits of the relationship, Asher, separated you, distinguished and differentiated you, Badal Eth Atom, from these people and their nations, Minha Kara 2024. God's instructions and his intent, are clear. Since he abhors the culture of man, which is universally religious, political, and militaristic, he wanted his people to be different. Israel was to be a shining example of how much better life would be without the controlling and oppressive influence of clerics and kings. Therefore, why, you should be set apart and separated, special and distinct, Haya Kadosh, to approach me, La Eni, because, Ky, I, Yahweh, any 196 Yahweh, am set apart and special, unlike what is commonly perceived, Kadosh. And so, Wa, I have separated you, differentiating you, Badaleth Atom, from these nations, min ha'amim, to be mine, to draw near and exist with me, la haya la eni. Kara, called out, Leviticus 2026. 20, Yahweh concludes his call for his people to be set apart and uncommon, and thus not religious, by reminding them that religion is deadly. As a result, when Israelites ignored this admonition and rejected their inheritance, God scolded his way with children throughout the prophets. He would hold them accountable for the fate they had chosen. Since we commenced our review of the fourth chapter of Hausher a dozen pages ago, a quick review is in order. God began by requesting. Listen to, Sharma, the word, Dabar, of Yahweh, Yahowah, children of Israel, Beni Israel, for it is certain that, Ky, Yahweh, Yahweh, has a dispute and grievance, Ribe, against the inhabitants, Imyashab, of the land and earth, Ha Eres. This is because, Ky, there is no honesty or integrity, Ein Emeth, no devotion or sense of loyalty, wine kesed, nor understanding, not even any thoughtful insights pertaining to, wine doubt, God, Elohim, in the land and on earth, Baha Eres. Hausha 4 to 1. They have sanctioned the curse of Allah, bringing restrictions, bans, and punishments upon themselves based on their oaths, Allah. So, they will cringe in fear, bow in submission, and be disowned for these cringeworthy deceptions, 197 because they have promoted lies while annulling the relationship, by being delusional, resulting in them being oppressed, malnourished, and sometimes starved as they are estranged, wa kakash. They will be murdered and be murderous, dashed by the sword and cut into pieces, ratsack. They will steal, surreptitiously purloining what belongs to another, ganab. Then, by continuously and demonstrably committing religious infidelity, wanaf, they will break all bounds in diaspora, parrots. And they will be plagued, wanaga, by the shedding of copious amounts of blood, dam bar dam. Hausha 4 to 2. This is the reason that, al ken, the land will dry up, abalha eres, the region will become a parched desert over a long period, cal imperfect. All who live within it, shirl yashab bar hai, including the animals, bar chea, with the life forms of the expansive region, Hasade, along with the birds, Wabar Of, including the flying creatures of the sky, Hashamaim, and even the fish of the lakes, rivers, and seas, Wagam Dag Ha Yam, also the aquatic life in natural bodies of water, will fight for survival, Asaf, diminishing and ceasing to exist over a protracted period, Nephil imperfect. Hausha, he saves, Hosea 4 3. 
and it has happened just this way, throughout the entire region, and for this very reason. Yet, ack, but thereafter as a result, no one should blame, plead or quarrel with, our ribe, no individual should accuse or contend with, a lone individual, each, one person. He should not make a practice of arguing with or judging, al yakark he should not continually rebuke, accuse or chastise, vindicate or punish, Heifel imperfect 198 Yusuf, of his own free will, he should not continually engage with another in such a way that they are alike in complaining, a single person, each, one individual. And this is because, wa, your people, Amata, are just like, Ka, resemble, the argumentative and contentious nature, Ribe, the insulting and conflicting approach of the quarrelsome and accusatory, Heifel participle, of the priest, Cohen, the one who is supposed to be teaching and ministering by helping to explain and perform the Mikre. Hausha, he saves, Hosea 4-4. I agree with Yahweh. And as it is with me, it is also a pet peeve for him. It is inappropriate to blame Nazi Germany solely on Hitler, the Soviet Union on Marx, Lenin, or Stalin, or Communist China on Mao Zedong. Likewise, it is wrong to blame Judaism solely on Akiba, Christianity on Paul, or Islam on Muhammad. The invasions of Yahweh, Judea by Rome were not exclusively the fault of Vespasian or Hadrian. Many are required to start a religion, revolution, or invasion. So, from a modern perspective, Putin isn't even the lead culprit with regard to the war in Ukraine, although he is blamed 99.999% of the time. Yes, there are lots of bad people in positions of power and influence. But they would be like a lone flea-bitten and whiny dog without a pack of misguided souls with their nose up the con man's rear. Had Timothy, Luke, and Mark, and later Matthew, Constantine, and Eusebius not picked up the torch Peter and Paul ignited, Christianity would have fizzled out long ago. Had Muhammad not enticed mercenaries in Yathrib to rob and enslave civilians for profit, the world would never have known the Islamic prophet. Hitler fired but one shot and it was to his own head. It takes a nation to ruin humankind. Therefore, wa, you will stumble and fall, kashal, you will stagger, be brought down and overthrown, fail, 199 by day, Hayam, and the prophet, also, Wanabigam, the one who claims to speak for God likewise, will waver and falter, becoming injurious, Kashal, will be overthrown, along with you, Imota, at night, Layla, during the darkness. Then, Wa, I will make this comparable too, Dama, I will cause this to silence and resemble, your mother, Amota. Hausha, he saves, Hosea 4-5. God's problem with his people is their religion. It is the issue that continues to separate man from God. Since the people were as corrupt as their clerics, God told the Israelites, and us through them, that no one was in a position to point fingers. The destiny of the deceived would be the same as that of those who deceived them, at least in the sense that they would both stumble and fall. In this context, especially in the midst of Yahweh's overt condemnation of Judaism, his next statement is among the most revealing ever written. My people, Ameni, are destroyed and they will perish, Dama, they are ruined and will cease to exist, having become the brunt of a sad story, Nephil perfect, the people have destroyed themselves and will suffer the consequence for a protracted, but limited, period of time for what they have done which is destructive and ruinous, because of, min, from, a lack of understanding as a result of corrupted information, barely hard doubt, being without adequate knowledge, having insufficient awareness, and deficient discernment, lacking the will to recall what is important and the capacity to rationally analyze the data to comprehend it, infinitive substantive, being ignorant and irrational regarding these prophetic revelations has come to demonstrably define Israelites over the long chasm of time. This is because, ky, for the express reason that, you, utter, have avoided and rejected, mass, you have two hundred spurned and despised, refused and disdained, showing an aversion to, cal perfect, revealing that the avoidance was complete and the rejection was literal, the process which leads to understanding, hard doubt, the knowledge required to comprehend, the information which enables discernment. Therefore, wa, so then, I will consistently reject you and avoid you, Mars Otter, I will actually disassociate from you and will rebuff you, coming to despise and loathe you as vile, showing an aversion to you, spurning you, Cal Imperfect, from serving as priests and ministers, Min Kahan, from acting as counselors and clerics, working as teachers or facilitators, Peel Infinitive, this decision to curtail the priestly service is being imposed upon Israel by Yahweh, emphatically, demonstrably, and continually. On my behalf, La any, for me or to approach me. And since Wa, you have consistently ignored and forgotten, failing to remember or respond to, Shekak, you have overlooked and lost sight of the significance of, ceasing to care about, and failing to mention, Cal Imperfect, actually and continually become oblivious to, the Torah, teaching and guidance of your God, 
Torah Elohim Otter, your God's Torah instructions and directions, your God's source of leadership and path to follow, the Almighty's education, derived from. Colon To, God's signed, written, and enduring, Torah, way of treating people, Ta, giving us the means to explore, find, and choose, Yara, the source of instruction, training, supervision, and direction which flows from God, Tob, providing answers that facilitate our restoration and return, even our reply to that which is Tob, good, pleasing, beneficial, and right, and that which causes us to be loved, to become acceptable, and to endure, to Hawa, purifying and cleansing us, thereby Tor, providing us with the opportunity to change our attitude and thinking toward 201 God, I also, any Gam, will ignore and forget your children, Jacob Ben Otter, I will overlook your sons, lose sight of your children, and consider your offspring as worthless, Cal imperfect. Hausha, he saves, Hosea 4 6. For religions based upon the Talmud, New Testament, or Quran to emerge and grow in the shadow of this declaration, the men responsible for promoting them had to be willfully dishonest. In fact, since the prophecies revealed by Hausha prove divine inspiration, it is a miracle that anyone believes any religion, when we can and should know and understand. There are few passages as important to God's people as this one. And many refers to Israel, to the descendants of Abraham, Yitchak, and Yaakov. From the opening statement, Israelites have been the cause of Yahweh's angst and the focus of his condemnation. This is so for a number of reasons. First, Yahweh established his covenant with Israel, essentially adopting them into his family. They were destined to inherit everything God had to offer. But because they were so readily misled, they were disinherited. Second, Yahweh liberated the children of Israel from being oppressed by religion and politics in Miraim. He revealed his Torah, guidance to them, speaking directly to these Hebrews in their language. And even though he led them into the promised land in spite of their hideous behavior, they showed no appreciation and quickly abandoned God. Third, Israelites were groomed and raised to be the shining example of what life would be like for those who listen to and trust Yahweh. Instead, they became infamous for being belligerent. The realization that they did not listen, that they pursued the ways of the Gentiles, worshipping false gods and giving homage to arrogant 202 kings, broke Yahweh's heart. Our Creator and Father would watch as those he sought to love were humiliated, and abused by those he asked them to avoid. Fourth, Israelites as a whole, not just Yahweh, were called to serve as Yahweh's witnesses, his prophets. And yet, because they forsook his instruction and forewent rational contemplation, Hausha would be the last Israelite prophet. The greatest opportunity ever afforded men and women by God was squandered and tossed away. Lastly, Yahweh honors his promises, even when his people are undeserving. So, to save a remnant of Israel, to reconcile their relationship with Yahweh and himself, he would have to get their attention at a different time and in a different way. And as the ultimate insult to Israel's arrogance, Agawi was asked to reintroduce them to the Torah and call them home. Apart from Yahweh, human souls dama, perish, an estranged nipesh, conscious dama, ceases to exist. This is one of the most vital lessons we can learn from God and it is at the forefront of this declarative statement. For the thoughtless and faithful, there is no eternal life in heaven nor everlasting punishment in hell but, instead, nothing. And while this may not register with some readers, it is essential to our understanding of Yahweh. If, instead, God had created a paradigm wherein those who were unaware of him, who were misled about him, or even who chose to reject him were eternally tormented in hell, he would be rendered unlovable and sadistic. But this religious perception is not reality. Shaul, hell is reserved for those who deliberately mislead others and abuse them via religion, politics, patriotism, militarism, education, culture, or conspiracy. Their punishment is not only deserved, recompense is the only way to be fair to those they harmed. The founders and principal catalysts for religion will all be there, along with 203 a long list of emperors, kings, popes, pastors, imams, and rabbis. We have all been invited to enjoy eternal life in Shamaim, heaven with Yahweh, even though as few as one in a million will accept God's offer. We avail ourselves of this opportunity by listening to Yahweh by reciting his Torah, Nabi, Wa Mizmor, and then responding appropriately to the conditions of his Barith, and invitations to the Mikre. Israel has become so hideously misled that they have come to embody the worst of Dhamma, having become the brunt of a sad story. They have become a nightmarish parable unto themselves, the most universally maligned people in human history. We are reading the reason Jews have become the object of so many conspiracy theories. Bailey hard doubt is a bad thing. Ignorance is destructive, not bliss. God's people have fallen, just as has humanity at large, because far too many lack understanding. This is due to many factors, including being inundated by the religious, political, and conspiratorial with corrupted information. 
Those Bailey hard doubt are without adequate knowledge. They have insufficient awareness to be discerning and thoughtful, which is why most believe and the world is awash in unfounded opinions. In the case of Israelites, they lack the will to recall the lessons of the Torah. And without God's guidance, they have become incapable of rationally analyzing the prescriptions for living Yahweh has provided. Contrary to what the religious believe, we must think our way to God. He is not found at the end of faith's multicultural rainbow. Yahweh's Torah is comprised of teaching and guidance, instructions and directions, so that we are suitably educated. But when God's dissertation on life is mass, 204 neglected or, worse, rejected, there is no doubt, basis for understanding. Knowledge is required before we can make the connections and associations needed to comprehend Yahweh's approach to life. We cannot distinguish between right and wrong, differentiate between good and bad, or discriminate between the teachings of God and the edicts of man without access to verifiable information and the will to exercise good judgment regarding it. Every rabbi, who has claimed to serve God is lying. The same is true for every pastor and priest, every minister and theologian. Not one knows Yahweh. In fact, they have all avoided him as he has rejected them. Yahweh designated specific individuals in well-defined roles to serve him and his people. These included the Kohen, priests. All of Loe descent were asked to educate God's people and help them understand his instructions and attend his mikrei. But when the teachers forsook their education, they became useless and were discarded. And while this prophecy clearly states that this was the reason behind the demise of the Kohen, priests, there is more to the story. The Israelites had rejected Yahweh to the extent they had replaced him. They had no interest in listening to their god, preferring to heed the myths associated with the gods they had purloined from the Gaum. With the Israelites unwilling to listen, there would be a long intermission. There would no longer be a reason for the Kohen, priests under these conditions. However, you will notice that Yahweh did not replace Kohen with rabbis. He simply mass, rejected the priests, avoiding all contact with them. Therefore, Judaism's twisted variation of replacement theology, whereby rabbis have replaced the priests, is as irrational and inappropriate as Christianity's version, whereby 205 Gentiles replaced Jews. Moreover, when Roman Catholics usurped the priestly title, they unwittingly demonstrated that they were not kahan la ne, ministering on God's behalf. In Judaism, the myth that rabbis draw their authority from God is as errant and deadly as the myth that their Talmud is an oral Torah with a legacy dating back to Mose. Yahweh disowned his people, disinheriting and divorcing Israel, because they consistently ignored his Torah. And considering their fascination with the Talmud, had it been a second Torah, this statement would cease to be true. This is the one-two punch that destroys Judaism. Yahweh has said that Israel has ceased to be rational regarding his Torah. Rather than observe and study it as rabbis protest, they are ignoring it and, thus, not responding to the Torah. God's prophetic proclamation is both consistent with our observable reality regarding the rabbis and in diametric opposition to Judaism. Further, Torah does not mean law as the religious profess. It is comprised of teaching and guidance, things we can learn from and follow, but not obey. The Torah is Yahweh's. The Talmud is rabbinical. The fate of our souls and those of our children hinges upon which we rely or believe. Both are not an acceptable option. Israel was destroyed and Israelites perished, ceasing to exist, because they did not understand the difference between Yahweh's teaching and man's edicts. There is only one way to participate in the Barith, covenant and one path to Shamaim, heaven. We accept it and teach it to our children, or they will be forgotten by God as surely as their parents ignored Yahweh. 206 The fate of every soul is determined by this formula. We come to know and understand by studying the Torah, teaching of our God. Yahweh accepts or rejects us on this basis. So, here's something to ponder, since God's people are destroyed for lack of understanding his Torah, how is faith the alternative? After all, faith is a substitute for knowledge. The larger human institutions grow, the worse they become. It is gang mentality played out on the scale of nations and civilizations. It is the same with principalities as it is with religions. They not only feed upon the people's willingness to acquiesce and be controlled, but the leaders of such institutions are also emboldened by the increased access to sex, power, and money. And so it is with the cleric, so it is with those he has conned. That is why Yahweh said. So as, Kar, they grew in number and as the rabbis became more influential, Rabarbhem, they increased in population and became more numerous and self-exalting, so much the more, Ken, they missed the way, Chatter, they were misled and went in the wrong direction, retreating from what is right and becoming too culpable, blameworthy, and offensive, Cal perfect, to approach me, La any, concerning me. I exchanged, Ma, I substituted, Hyphal imperfect, their reputation and reward, Carbaud hem, their honor and respect, their status and forthcoming abundance, 
4, Ma, shame, calone, dishonor and disgrace, ignominy and infamy, an exceedingly low status, engendering slander and public humiliation. Hausher, he liberates, Hosea 4 7. With the previous statement excommunicating the Kohen, it is by recognizing that Rabab serves as the basis of Rabbi that this becomes a rather biting indictment. As the 207 Rabab, number of rabbis increased and they grew, ken chatala any, so much the more they were misled and missed the way to approach God. The rabbis were culpable and offensive to Yahweh, just as his name and approach were repulsive to them. To be fair, such is the case with every religion. People go along to get along. They assume that their religion is right because so many people believe it. But the truth has never been popular. And for all of human history, deceptions have held sway. This passage presents an ironic twist. As people grow in stature, they recede from God. The more people move in one direction, the more likely it is that they are headed the wrong way. The more people strive to be influential, the more insignificant they become. Humankind has substituted transitory wealth for an eternal reward, and has exchanged the illusion of power for its genuine manifestation. Our appreciation for Yahweh's prophetic testimony grows when we set what he has revealed beside the long history of human malfeasance. A recounting of the exploits of civilizations leaves the observant and moral with the realization of just how awful men and women have been. While individuals can be good or bad, and are typically both, in a group, we humans are resolutely awful, we engage in human sacrifice to appease the gods. We enslave our neighbors, so that we prosper by their toil. We impose our politics and economic schemes and claim to be righteous and democratic. We rape the planet, rob it of its resources, and are murderous while pretending to be moral and peaceful. Lies are preferred over truth, control to freedom, religion to a responsible relationship with God. We establish enormous militaries and equip the killers with weapons of mass destruction. Then we are indoctrinated to praise the soldiers wielding the 208 implements of death and believe that the least free and most destructive institutions on earth are responsible for our liberty and prosperity. We tax the productive and reward the unproductive and think that we are being progressive and compassionate. We divide people into groups based on the color of their skin and then blame others for being racist. And should someone raise their head above the crowd to demonstrate the degrading duplicity of it all, we slander and crucify the lone voice of reason. We will either accept a God or reject God based not on the testimony of God but of men. When engaged in pursuing their political or religious ambitions, people are rotten. They feed upon, a cow, they are fed and nourished by, even prey upon, the wrongdoing and sin offerings, chatteth, the iniquity and propitiations, the errant ways and misguided beliefs, of my people, Ameni, my family. These souls, Nipeshu, lift up and accept, promote and honor, Nasa, they elevate and advance, forgive and even respect, their perversity and wrongdoing, even their depravity, wa la one hem, their wicked ways and resulting liability, their iniquity and injustice. Hausha 4 to 8. And so, wa, likewise, it will be the same, higher ka, it is identical, for the people, ha am, as it will be, ka, for the priest, ha Cohen. I will hold both of them accountable, wa pakad al hu, I will take stock of them, judging and punishing them, for their ways Derek hu, for their conduct. I will repay them, bringing back upon them, wa shubla hu, I will require restitution, seeking retribution for, the foolish, beguiling, and cruel things 209 they have done, mal hu, for their oppressive practices, malevolent deeds, and malicious characterizations, from Allah, to act foolishly and wantonly. Hausha, he delivers, Hosea 4 9. This is true both literally and symbolically. If not for people's individual and collective sense of guilt and implied hellish consequences, religions wouldn't exist. Rabbis and priests prey on people's fear of the unknown, and on their fear of punishment. As a result, they devour the funds of the unsuspecting by promising their victims that their donations will somehow exonerate them, and elicit favor from God. Religions prosper using this strategy. If a Hasidic Jew pays the inflated price of kosher food and pays the rabbi to bless their home, they are pronounced righteous. Christians were beguiled to acquire indulgences, which did nothing except enrich the church. In Islam, a jihadist is promised sexual indulgence in Allah's brothel. From God's perspective, the blame the rabbi for misleading the alibi will not work. Every religious individual will be held accountable for what they have done. And that is because, at the very least, believers have given priests the pretense of credibility by participating in their religion. Most have corrupted their children by encouraging them to follow their example. Rather than endearing a soul to God, their faith will convict them of infidelity. And while that isn't a crime in courtrooms established by men, it is a capital offense with God. The quid pro quo of this message is a killer. 
because Jews and Gentiles have disassociated themselves from Yahweh, either by ignoring him or by replacing him with a god conceived by men, they have been spurned by Yahweh and are crippled spiritually. Oblivious, they have been forgotten. Despicable, they have been rejected. 210 It is divine justice, but it is also deadly. And believers have no one to blame but themselves. The truth is available, but most choose to ignore it. Yahweh stood at the door and called us home, but too few paid attention. Most have not even bothered to ask our benefactor his name. Very few even know the name of the door, Hasak. Rabbis have come to promote countless rites and rituals God views as perverse. They advance their arguments over Yahweh's instructions. And if that was all there was to it, by doing away with the rabbis, Yahweh would be able to resolve Israel's problems. However, as it is for the priest, so it is with the people. By accepting the rabbinical lies, and by defending and financing this attack on the word of God, everyone is culpable. Therefore, to be fair, Yahweh must hold all of Israel accountable. He will judge them individually and collectively and will be hard-pressed to find an acceptable soul. Without recompense, there can be no justice. Without retribution, life is not fair. Even if the majority would like God to forgive and forget, it is not in his character to be immoral. The victims of the Inquisition and the Holocaust must be assured that their tormentors will be held accountable. Vespasian and Hadrian must suffer for the suffering they inflicted and they are but two among many. Accountability isn't mean but, instead, fair. It is compassionate and moral to seek justice for those who have suffered needlessly, and even if it is counter to your sensibilities, those who tortured others will be tortured, rapists will be raped, and murderers will endure a slow and painful death. This is as it must be. And while that is in death, for the rabbis, in life, it isn't much better. 211 They will eat, wa cal, they will consume food, cal perfect, but never be satisfied, while lo saba, not before or have their needs met, cal imperfect. They will act like prostitutes, zana, they will be as unfaithful as whores, hyphal perfect, without ever being productive, while lo parrots, without satisfying urges, because, kyf, they have neglected to observe, as ablashamar, they are derelict in their consideration of, cal perfect, yahawa, yahowa, our eloah, God as directed in his Torah, teaching regarding his hayah, existence and our shalom, restoration. Hausha 410. Engaging in religious infidelity, immorality, and unfaithfulness, Zanuth, through harlotry and whoredom, coupled with intoxication, yein, drunkenness and inebriation, of even barely fermented wine, Thyraush, being dispossessed and impoverished by being disinherited, seizes and takes away, Lakak, grasps hold of, good judgment, Lab, rational thinking and a proper attitude. Hausha, he liberates, Hosea 411. Faith without knowing, sex without love, and observing without purpose are unfulfilling. Prostitutes are continually engaged in intercourse, and yet, there is nothing to show for it. Over the past, 22 years, I have found an axiom, that has rung true without exception. The overtly religious and political are incapable of exercising good judgment. No amount of evidence is sufficient, and no rational argument is ever compelling, even if both come from God Almighty. While intoxication slows judgment, religion debilitates it. 212 That was a lot to process. But such is the essence of Yahweh's revelation through Hausha. The subject material is not appealing to God, and he is pressed for time, opening the floodgates of instruction. He wants to elicit a different response, but he knows that it isn't going to happen, not for a very long time. Perhaps now God is turning to the progressives, to the Jewish environmentalists of our day. He may be chiding them for worshipping nature to the exclusion of its creator. Or, maybe this is nothing more than a swipe at the Christian Christmas tree or his people's affinity for worshipping Asherah within groves of trees. My people, am any, question, shall, ask inquisitively and intently, pondering the possibilities of, the trees, bar its hue, and their branches, staffs, and walking sticks, wa Mikel hue, as if they are going to impart information and speak to them, Nagadla hue, are going to convey a message to them. Indeed, KY, the spirit, Ruwak, of religious infidelity, zanumlim, of prostitution, of feigning affection, of pretending to be devoted, and of whoredom, has led them astray and caused them to wander away, th, has misled them. And they act like whores and religious prostitutes, wazana, performing like unfaithful harlots in relation to a succession of their gods, takath elohim hem. Hausha, he saves, Hosea 4.12. Three divine attributes are displayed in this statement. God understands human nature. Nothing we do surprises him. Unimpaired by time, he knows our past and sees how it relates to our present and future. And he is bold and blunt when it comes to exposing deceptions. 
213 religious cults have long worshipped nature the same way progressives do today. The earth reveals its concerns to them as opposed to revealing God's nature. Liberals would have you believe that opinions are entitlements, that truth is relative, that perceptions are reality, that tolerance is a virtue, and even that morality is situational. Having elevated themselves and their elitist ideals above the very idea of God, having become zealous in their political fanaticism, they are pimps soliciting on behalf of their worthless agenda. They want to set moral standards where only the abnormal is acceptable and establish control over life and death with unquestioned abortions even when paid for and funded by those who oppose them. Mostly, they want to make life meaningless by negating the freedom to choose, individual accountability, and even the chance to succeed or fail. Mortally afraid that they cannot defend their positions, progressives seek to control what people can say, write, and read. The left has unleashed a mighty horde of thought police on social media and the internet. Read this while you can, while they will allow it. The religious are moved by a different spirit. Ignorant of what Yahweh has revealed, they are readily misled. Believing that they are pleasing God, he views them as a loving wife would perceive a prostitute chasing after her husband. If he succumbs to one, there will be more. And indeed, this was true with Israel, where one misguided adaptation of Judaism would lead to countless more. What God describes next must be seen in context. The subject of his ire is still singular, religion, at this point they were more copycats than inventive. The Israelites were emulating the ways of the Gawi. On hilltops and summits, al Rosh Har Harim, on the tops of mountains, they offer sacrifices, Zabak. And so upon the hills, Wal Har Jibar, upon the knolls and 214 hilltops, they join in and are bound together to blow smoke, Qatar, they fumigate the area to shut out others, burn incense and aromatic wood, and make a smoke offering to appease their concerns, under, Takath, beneath, prominent trees like red oaks, alone, and white poplars, Libna, with any large tree serving as an inappropriate goddess, Ella, a massive tree, cursed, unfit, improper, feminine of El, God, because her shadow. The object blocking the light in lesser dimensions, cell high, the imposition of her presence diminishes illumination as a two-dimensional representation of the three-dimensional object, is perceived as pleasant, desirable, and beneficial, Tob, is deemed good, useful, and pleasing. Therefore, Alken, your daughters, Bath Atom, are acting like religious prostitutes and disingenuous whores, Zana, are behaving like harlots selling a feigned impression of love for security and money, and your brides, Wakala Atom, your spouses, are unfaithful and adulterous, Naf, are cheating on the relationship, by being religious. Hausha 413, I will not take this into account and record it, Lo Pakad, I will not count this, against your daughters, Al Bathatam, when, KY, they are acting like religious prostitutes and disingenuous whores who are pretending to be adoring for money, Zana, nor against your brides, Wa Al Kala Atam, when, KY, they are unfaithful lovers cheating on the relationship, Naf, dishonoring the marriage by being religious. This is because, KY, they, themselves, are cavorting with, Hemim Parad, they are selfishly and continually open to, causing divisiveness, disassociation, and isolation with, Peel Imperfect, religious prostitutes, Hazana. They are with the cult and temple prostitutes, Waim Harkadishar, with the holy whores, the women who 215 have sex with believers in religious shrines as part of the worship service, and they offer sacrifices, slaughtering animals, Zebark, as people, Wa Am, devoid of understanding, Lo Bin, incapable of comprehending by evaluating the evidence and testimony in a rational manner, being discerning by making all of the proper connections and associations, which is ruinous and debilitating, thrusting them away. Lobot, which is catastrophic and degrading, also depressing. Hausha, he delivers, Hosea 414. This affirms one of the many insights we can also derive from the garden. While Shoah was misled by Satan's misappropriation of Yahweh's testimony, the reason she was susceptible is that Adam was derelict. He neglected their relationship, and he did not teach his wife what he had learned from Yahweh, at least to the extent needed to rebuff Satan's miscasting of God's message. To be sure, Shoah went rogue. She wanted to be a goddess. And she carried her animosity toward Yahweh, and Adam outside of the garden, harboring it for a long time. But none of this would have happened had Adam contributed more to the relationship and spent more time talking with his wife. In this case, the women were as religious, and unfaithful as were the men. And their marriages were as broken as the covenant. But they were in it together, with the men setting the poor example the women followed. This may seem as if this is deja vu all over again. But clearly, God does not want us to miss the message. Religion is whorish according to Yahweh, a form of prostitution where devotion is feigned for a false sense of security and money. Further, as has been the case from the beginning, Naf, 
adultery is being used as a metaphor to denounce being unfaithful and disingenuous to God. 216 Satan puts on a show, as a token of their appreciation, religion had sex appeal. Truth be known, almost every religion exists to give men power over women, who are little more than chattel. Women cannot even get a divorce in Judaism without their husband's written approval. In Pauline Christianity, men lord over women. And in Islam, women are possessions and prizes to be won. And that is not good. An unequal relationship is typically a bad one. Consider Yahweh's with Yisrael. In addition to cavorting with religious whores, the men of Yisrael were doing something far worse, something the Haredi do even to this day. They offer their sacrifices, even slaughtering animals, without purpose. Nothing is achieved, even by those who attend the Mikre, unless we understand the reasons we are responding to Yahweh in this way and on these days. There are few things as degrading as religious rituals. They imply that God wants us to check our brains at the door and grovel on the floor, to waste our time performing repetitive and mindless tasks. If that were the case, why establish the covenant and reveal the Torah? Up to this point, Hausha's message has been directed toward Israel, the ten extended families comprising the northern kingdom. There was still hope for Yahweh. Another dozen prophets would be sent their way. Even though, Im, you act like a religious whore, Zana Otter, you are a fraud and prostitute, unfaithful and unreliable, feigning devotion, cal participle, Yisrael, those who contend and struggle against God, Yisrael, let not Yahweh, the beloved of Yah be guilty and suffer the same fate, Alashim Yahweh, let not those related to Yah fail, become offensive, and be similarly wrong, cal imperfect. 217 do not come to, while Albo, do not enter, Gilgal, circular thinking, ha Gilgal, a whirlwind, tumbleweed, chariot wheel, swirling storm, or circular reasoning, first Israelite encampment west of the Yarden, neither ascend, wa alala, do not rise, to Baith Arwen, the home of affliction, Baith Arwen, the house of vanity, religious idolatry, and trouble, a town of Benjamin, Benjamin. Do not consistently curse, swear, or continually take an oath, wa a shaba, adjure, make a promise, or take a vow, nephil imperfect. Yahweh lives. Yahweh che, Yeh exists to vigorously animate and restore lives, Yeh is vital to life and the living. Dot Hausha, he delivers, Hosea 4.15. While Israel had become a lost cause, Yahweh wasn't, at least not yet. There would be righteous people, honorable kings, and glorious prophets in Daud's shadow. And while Yahweh would fall, and suffer under the Babylonians, Greeks, Imperial Romans, Roman Catholics, the first Muslims, the Ottomans, British, Nazis, conspiratorialists, and progressives, their intermission from Yahweh was another three centuries down the road. They would succumb to the circular reasoning of religion, and take vanity to an entirely new level. Unlike man's religious schemes where conversion is the means to submission and control, there is no oath of allegiance for the covenant. It is enough that Yahweh lives. By referencing the towns of Gilgal and Baith Arwen, Yahweh underscored his anti-religious message. Gilgal is where the people made Shaul king and where the ill-conceived leader ran afoul of Yahweh. Gilgal speaks of circular things, such as circular reasoning, tumbleweeds blown by the wind, and swirling storms. This is telling 218 because the Christian term, church, is most closely related to Circe, the daughter of the sun god, Helios. It is from her name that the English words, circle and circus, are derived. You will find them in the halos, representing the circular disc of the Sunday and Sunday worship throughout Christianity. Even religious Jews have their circles, wearing the kippah, which is of Greek influence. The Israelites confirmed kingship on Shaul, Saul here. And it was at Gilgal, that his authority was taken away as a result of his failure to listen to Yahweh. Shaul is also a harbinger for Shaul, Paul, the founder and principal author of Christianity. Among the vainest of men, he, like King Saul, was from the tribe of Benjamin, Benjamin, which is where the house of affliction and vanity was located. Indeed, K.Y., surely and truly, Israel, Israel, is as stubborn, Kasara, as defiant, obstinate, rebellious, and unwilling to change, as a cow, Para. Now as a result, can, otter, at a point in time, so then, in the sequence of the narrative and as the logical consequence, Yahweh, Yahowah, an accurate presentation of the name of Eloah, God as guided by his Torah, instructions regarding his higher, existence, shepherd them, Rahem, care for their needs, lead, nurture, and protect them, as a lamb, Karkibs, as sheep, in the limitless, spacious place with vast freedom, Baha Merchib, in the midst of the broad and open way. Hausha 416. Ephraim, Ephraim, useless ash, waste of carbon, and plural of fruitful cow, the northern kingdom, 
is in accord with and allied to, Shabar, joined to, in union with, and is casting the spells off, harmful idolatrous religious images and vexing false gods, Azab, objects of worship. 219 You should choose to leave him alone, Yana Hu Yana, let him be, satisfied with his intermission, and undisturbed during his time out, Haifal imperative. Hausha 417. As their alcoholic beverages, so be hem, their beer and wine, are consumed and removed, so, are finished and dragged away, they go out whoring, acting like disingenuous prostitutes, zana zana, they feign adoration for shekels, being religious and unfaithful, cheating on the relationship, hyphal infinitive perfect. The religious are sexually and financially exploitive, as blind and senseless stooges, Megan Hugh, their cultic sex partners who have traded debauchery for money, surrendering to their pretense and gaudy ornamentation and phony embellishments as a result of having their vision impaired, love, Ahab, seem to adore and desire, even prefer, ignominy and shame, calone, insults, scorn, dishonor, scandals, infamy, and humiliation. Hausha 418. A spirit, Ruwak, has laid siege to and enveloped, Zara, has bound itself to and oppressed, weakening and troubling, harassing and vexing, Cal perfect, them, eth high, in her wings, Barkan of high, within the extremity of her garment. They will be ashamed and humiliated, even confounded and disappointed, while Bosch, have a feeling of emotional distress over the loss of hope, despair as a result of having committed a serious sin, as a result of their sacrifices, Min Zebarkem. Hausha, he saves, Hosea 419. I've been called a lot of things, including stubborn, defiant, rebellious, and unwilling to change. My stance regarding Yahweh is formidable and unwavering. And even with all of the titles afforded this mission, from Cook, Sucker to Nakri, my observant foreigner, from Malak, 220 messenger to Basar, Herald, from Yada, knows some things to Zarawa, one who sows some seeds, I've not heard Yahweh reference a para, cow. It does not sound flattering. If God were to equate any of us to an animal, the preferred choice is a kibbs, lamb. Yahweh views himself as a ra, shepherd and clearly loves those who tend to his beloved sheep. But sadly, there was no longer any hope of guiding Israel. They were feeding upon themselves, herbivores gone rogue. There was no sweet disposition, desire to be led, or willingness to follow as part of Yah's flock. Left out on their own, as would be the case, they were a danger to themselves. Clearly, they could not be trusted. It wasn't that Ephraim was flirting with some gods and goddesses along the way. They were bound to them, in league and agreement with them, speaking for these harmful religious images and vexing false gods. With the real one at their beck and call, it was an inexcusable and ignominious fall from the lap of the Almighty to the feet of the adversary. What follows is unexpected but wise. God is encouraging us to leave Israel alone. The people are beyond repair, completely unwilling to listen. Addressing them would have been a waste of breath. And if it were not for the promise to reconcile the relationship, even today, God's message would fall on deaf ears. Just leave them alone. The religious are allergic to the truth and there is no reason to be downwind of their sleaze.